Hi everyone, welcome back to Acres of Clay and today I am going to be making kombucha. Now kombucha is a fermented drink and I've been making it for quite a while and I've had some of you viewers asking me about it so I thought I would kind of take you through the step-by-step -step process that I take to making it. Hola. Now the reason um, we drink kombucha, kombucha is a fermented drink and so it is loaded with probiotics and it is really great for um, your digestion, digestive tract, your gut health. So if you have issues with the gut, I would recommend any type of fermented product and kombucha is really simple. If you have never fermented any types of food, um, kombucha is one of the easiest. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I do this. So the main component in kombucha is the SCOBY. And the SCOBY is made up of bacteria and yeast and that is what produces the fermented drink. You have to have a SCOBY in order to make kombucha. Um, there's a few different ways of getting SCOBY. So you can order them online. I'm sure you can find them on Amazon or eBay. You can also ask a friend for one, which is what I did uh, several years ago. Um, a neighbor had um, had given me one and mine have just grown since then or you can make your own when you go to the grocery store you can buy bottles of kombucha and as long as it's not a flavored kombucha you can make a scoby out of that it's kind of a lengthy process and I for one have not tried that so um, so I can't give a lot of advice about that. Now what you need for the SCOBY to feed off of, you're going to need tea and I would recommend black tea. Black tea um, can hold up under the heat that it's going to be um, when I'm brewing it because we're brewing it for a little longer than we would normal tea. Um, we brew it, I brew it for about 10 to 15 minutes, whereas green tea doesn't hold up to that type of heat. And that could make your kombucha maybe bitter or an off flavor. So I always use black tea. Sometimes I have mixed it, but my main tea would be the black tea. And I could throw in a little bit of green tea or even white tea. Um, and then we brew that and then we add sugar to this and the sugar is actually what the SCOBY feeds off of. So I make a one gallon batch at a time and to one gallon it's going to take a cup of sugar. I use, um, you can use either white granular sugar that you just get from your grocery store I oftentimes just use a raw sugar substance, um, sugar in the raw, or um, I think people have even said that they use honey, although I've never tried honey. And so this scoby actually needs that much sugar, so it's one cup to one gallon, and it needs that much sugar for it to feed off of while it's setting to ferment. I let mine ferment anywhere between 7 to 10 days. This batch that I'm about to uh, make uh, today has actually been set in for a couple of weeks. So it may have that more vinegar taste because the longer you let that ferment, the more vinegary it's going to taste. Which um, for somebody that's new to fermenting, that may be a really off flavor, but if you've been drinking kombucha for a while, 
um, you kind of get used to that. Plus, I add fruit and juice to my um, kombucha during the second ferment, which I will talk about in a little bit. It's easier to drink and it doesn't taste quite so vinegary. Okay, let's get started. So this here is, I always keep mine in quart size jars and that's what we drink out of. Um, people buy all kinds of fancy jars. I actually have some that have the, um, the lids that click up and they're more of a wine bottle. Um, I prefer just using these, they're easier to clean and it's easy for me because I have lots of mason jars. So anyways, first, first things first is making sure everything is very sterile because you're working with a live culture. Just like when um, you're fermenting or making cheeses or yogurts or something, you want to make sure that everything is sanit sanitized so that you don't introduce the wrong kinds of bacteria into your culture. I like to make sure that all my jars and everything I'm using it has been thoroughly cleaned and then I like to rinse everything off with vinegar so I just use white vinegar and that helps kill anything that may be a potential hazard to that SCOBY because the SCOBY is something that you have to make sure always stays healthy all right let's get making some kombucha this here is the kombucha that I made earlier and we will, we're, I'm going to just leave this set aside for a minute because I have to actually start brewing the tea so that can get going. I have a nice stainless steel pan here and what I do for, I'm going to be making one gallon of kombucha and what I do, and not everybody does this, but this helps speed up the process of making it is I'm only going to brew the tea in one quart of water. So I'm going to start heating this to a boil. This just this water. This is tap water. Be sure that you don't use chlorinated water or what I would call city water. Um, just because that is going to, the, the um, chlorine in that is going to kill that SCOBY. So if you can't get just tap water, use filtered water of some sort. Alright, I'm going to put this on the stove and get this boiling. Once that starts to boil, I'm going to add my tea bags. Now for one gallon of kombucha, I use six tea bags. You can use more or maybe, you could probably use five to seven. But I, always, I have found that six tea bags works really good for us. You can use loose leaf tea as well. I've done that. And I forget, is that 12 teaspoons of loose leaf? Well, you could do the math. If you know loose tea well enough, uh, yeah, I'm thinking it's 12 teaspoons per gallon. I'm not sure. Now, like I said earlier, you can use different, you can use like green tea or white tea, but I really would stick to, especially if this is your first time making it, black tea would be the way to go because it makes for a stronger SCOBY. And you want to make sure that that SCOBY is strong and can handle um, the change and how you're making it. Uh, so, two, four, six, I don't know why I got so many out. Six tea bags, and uh, what was I going to say? Oh, and, and you're definitely not going to want to use like herbal tea or anything. That could really mess up with the SCOBY, and you could have issues down the road. Alright, so this is, while that boils, I'm going to go ahead and describe this. This is the SCOBY that I made earlier. 
and it's actually kind of light compared to some because I have actually let it go a little too long and I always write the date of when I made it so I can remember and I leave it on here. Now I've covered this with cheesecloth and while that is boiling I'm going to take this out and I'm going to show you what I do but I want to make sure my hands are super clean. I have this bowl here and I'm going to put the SCOBY into this bowl plus I'm going to add about one cup of this kombucha that's already been made. We reserve a cup of it so that we can return that to the next batch of kombucha that we're making. If you forget to leave a cup out and reserve it, your SCOBY could end up dying um, or you could just ruin it. It needs that, that extra kombucha to get it a jump start on the, the sweet tea that we're making. I'm also not using any plastic. So you can use a plastic bowl to put the SCOBY in while you're making your next batch. But as far as a, a fermenting container, you mainly want to stick with glass. Plastic will mess up your kombucha and metal, any type of metal will have a um, a really bad reaction and you will have potential issues with your um, kombucha and your SCOBY. So I'm taking out the um, SCOBYs. Now remember that I said this kombucha has been going, my water is boiling, this kombucha has been going for a little longer than you normally would, okay? So the SCOBY has continued to grow. So this one isn't actually really thick compared to what you may have when you let it brew for only 7 to 10 days. Um, so here are, and I actually have three SCOBYs in here just because um, that's where they were hanging out. But this, the SCOBY that was um, just made is always the top layer. Let me get the tea in the bag. Okay, I just added the tea bags and they're just gonna steep for probably 10 to 15 minutes while I work on the rest of this. Every time you make a new batch of kombucha, the SCOBY is gonna grow another SCOBY or another layer on top of it. In that, you can um, separate and you can give that to a friend. So every time you make a batch, you're always going to uh, have a new SCOBY. So you're not going to run out of SCOBYs. This one is the new one. This is the one I will probably be using in my next batch. Just because I have... Oh, I have three other ones here that were hanging out in there. They're not, they're, they're not needed. You only need one SCOBY per batch. Now you're also going to watch your SCOBY because you want to look at it and make sure there are no weird colors or no, nothing fuzzy and growing on it. I have never had an issue with mold or any type of wrong bacteria growing on mine, but I have seen um, SCOBYs that um, have gone bad. So I, don't, I do know what they look like and um, this one here looks very healthy so I will keep, keep this one and yeah. So anytime you're going to see like stringy um, substance or just weird colors like you can see that this one here, maybe you can't, let me get closer. This has weird colors on the back side and the older the SCOBY, the darker it's going to get. So this one's older and it is definitely a lot darker. It may not produce the most tastiest um, um, kombucha. So you always want to use a young SCOBY. You don't necessarily need to keep all your SCOBYs. Uh, I have um, fed them to my chickens several times. Or you can just compost them. Alright, so yeah, be sure that your SCOBY is healthy before putting it in your new batch of tea. 
But right now I'm going to show you the process that I go through in order to put this in jars. What I'm going to do now is I have four quart sized jars here. I'm going to prepare the kombucha for the second ferment. This is the first ferment, just tea and sugar. You don't want to use fruit and you don't want to use like herbal teas like I said earlier. It's just black tea and sugar for the first ferment. The second ferment you, is the time where you can add fruit, you can add um, herbs, you can add juice, which is something I like. So, um, uh, our family really likes blueberry. Um, I really like grape juice in mine. So I'm going to add probably maybe a fourth of a cup to a half a cup. It really depends on you how much juice you want or how much fruit you want. So I add a little to the bottom. Now the rest of the family really likes... I know you can't see me. Now the rest of my family really likes um, blueberries. And since blueberries are not in season right now, um, during blueberry season, I pick a bunch and then we freeze them. So I use frozen blueberries in the, in the rest because um, those will get used quicker than my grape one. Now you may wonder how much, how many blueberries do I use? I have no idea. Um, I just guesstimate. I would say between a fourth and a half a cup. I'm going to use all that's in this bag. And you can use fresh fruit, you can use frozen fruit. Um, I've never tried canned fruit, and I've never tried dehydrated fruit. But we have tried all kinds of fruits. So whether it be apples or peaches, raspberries, um, what else is there? pineapple, anything like that, and also juices. So any type of juice would work. This is just homemade grape juice that I can, and that works really good. So Okay, now what I need to do is give this kombucha a stir. So I like to stir it all up. Now at this time in this, this process, there's not a lot of carbonation. There's some, but not as much as the second ferment. The second ferment is where the carbonation just blossoms. So that's if that's what you're looking for, if you like a carbonated kombucha, wait and do a second ferment. You can drink it just like this, but it's not going to be nearly as carbonated. Now, of course, I'm saving one cup of the kombucha. You can use a funnel for this, but I'm just going to eyeball it. I don't fill these completely full because during the fermenting time, they like to um, expand and bubble up. And a lot of people have issues with their kombucha um, exploding on them but if you don't fill your container as full and you let some of that air out every day you're not going to uh, have the the issues so now I'm gonna cover these and I actually just um, cover them with a lid I don't put cheesecloth or towel over them they um, ferment just like this with a lid on them And I really like the plastic lids for these. I like to use these because the metal ring ones, um, they can get rusty. They actually will start eating the, if you um, use this for any length of time, these will start to corrode. Okay, so now we're just going to let this sit on the counter or in a dark spot at room temperature for another 
two to three days, depending on your likeness. I mean, the more carbonation you want, um, the longer you can let it set. I don't ever let it set more than three days, though. Now, I'm going to rinse this out. You don't necessarily have to wash it with soap, but I'm going to rinse it with some vinegar. The tea is ready. It's steeped long enough. So what I do at this time is I put three more quarts of water in this container and I make sure that this water is nice and cold. So I have two quarts here. And I'll get one more quart. Now the reason I use cold water is and here's the third quart. Now the reason I use cold water for this and I don't brew it all in this in one gallon is um, first of all I would need a bigger pan but second of all the, and the main reason is this has to cool before I can add the SCOBY and the, uh, the, uh, the leftover kombucha from last batch. It has to be, I would say, under 90 degrees. I like it nice and cool. It's got to be um, like um, cool to the touches. I don't know. So what I do now is I add this tea right to the cold water. Right? And then I like to just squeeze all that water out of those tea bags. or actually squeeze it. That way I know I'm getting all that good tea. To this I'm going to add the one cup of sugar. And like I said, you can use white sugar, you can use raw sugar, uh, and I'm using raw sugar today. One cup per gallon that you're making. Give that a good stir. Now that may seem like a lot of sugar to you, but that SCOBY needs it to grow off of in order for this, the older SCOBY to grow a newer SCOBY, it feeds off of the sugar in this tea. What I like to usually do is add the sugar when the to the tea when it's hot, that way it dissolves better. But for some reason, I did it backwards today. So what I would usually do is make the tea, add the sugar to the hot water, dissolve that sugar, and then put it in the cold water. But this is dissolved good anyways. Now I like to test it for temperature and it's cool. So it's perfect. And I'm just gonna add that old kombucha, last batch kombucha, right back to this. Just like that. And then I like to give that a stir to incorporate that all around. Now by the time this is done and this scoby is fed on all that sugar, there won't be much sugar left in your finished product. So. Now I add this SCOBY right to the top. Mine usually floats. Some people sink. It don't matter. You just kind of let it do its own thing. Let it go where it wants. This other one here, I could put this with um, kombucha also. You can make a SCOBY hotel with it, which me just means that you are keeping it in some old kombucha that had that you're not feeding and just keep it and it will stay alive it's just not growing and it's not producing any more new scobies all right so i have everything in here you can see the scobies floating around um by the time i put this um in the in its isolated area it the scoby usually rises to the top I do not disturb this during the whole time it's fermenting. I don't look at it. I don't um, take the cloth off of it. I really don't do anything to it. I don't want to disturb 
um, what it's doing, okay? If you keep like um, stirring it or moving it, it's going to disrupt its process. So I don't do anything to it. Now you're going to want to put some type of cloth over it. You don't want to necessarily put a lid because this has to breathe. It's a living bacteria culture. So it needs air. It needs air flow. And so I just use this cheesecloth. You can use anything like a terry cloth or towel or something that's breathable. Secure it with a rubber band and this will keep any bugs out. Now fruit flies are really attracted to this and in the summer months when fruit flies are bad in our home, this helps keep them out because they would get in here and they could lay the eggs in there and that would be disastrous. So definitely use some type of cloth. I would stay away from using like napkins or paper towels or products like that unless you know they're like an organic product. You can, if you have a smaller uh, container, if you only want to use, uh, this is a gale and I believe and it's much smaller, uh, you could use like a coffee filter or something like that and secure it. Um, but if any like but if anything falls into it, any fibers of the fabric, call it, it could disrupt um, that SCOBY and it could go bad too. So you have to be careful what you're putting on top of it to make sure that nothing falls into it. All right, we are going to place this. I like to keep it in the corner in my kitchen. It's relatively dark. It's not super dark there by no means. And sometimes I just have it so that the cloth covers it so it's more dark more dark um, but you can put it in a closet in a cupboard anywhere where it's dark and it's cool not necessarily cold it should be between 68 to 74 maybe is ideal um, anything over that 74 76 uh, anything higher temperature than that this is going to ferment a lot faster so for us in the summer, when it gets hot in here and we don't have the air on, this ferments could ferment in five days instead of seven. So you want to be sure about that. And in the winter months when it is cooler in here, sometimes it can go two weeks and be just fine because it's cooler. So it's your judgment on how you want your kombucha to taste. And don't forget to write a little note so that so that you remember when you made this because it's easy to forget unless you do it on a weekly schedule. Say you do it every Monday. Um, I don't do that. So yeah, so this is how you make kombucha. And after three days of this second ferment, put it in the refrigerator and enjoy because it's so good for you. And we usually use this up by the time our next batch is ready. And it's good for children, it's good for adults, and it's very beneficial. I forgot to give this a little shake, but sometimes I just shake it around, especially the juice one, just to incorporate the juice um, throughout the whole thing. Alright guys, I hope you guys found this informational and beneficial to anybody that's interested in making kombucha. And uh, I hope I did a good job describing it to you. If you have questions on any part of this process, please leave a comment. And um, if I forgot to mention anything, leave a comment. I thank you all for watching. Please consider subscribing if you enjoy our videos. And we do all kinds of videos on our homestead and our dairy farm. Please leave comments, like our channel, and share it with your friends. And we would really appreciate that. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, we hope you are having a very blessed day. Take care.